uh, good day everyone uh, welcome to our third session of uh, business taxation uh, which is about vat uh, and vat return calculation of vat and vat return uh, as you know that uh, our last session we split it in two so this is our third lecture and uh, i will uh, you know uh, give another session next saturday hopefully 12 o'clock and uh, you will get a link and everything once i will talk to uh, you know uh, raman or jail in office so okay. so uh, let's get started uh, my name is yasser and uh, this is a third session of business taxations uh, today's lecture uh, we will quickly uh, i'll give you a review for a previous uh, sessions we discussed period of, period of accounting, accounting period, financial year, taxable, total profit, augmented profit, uh, end of accounting period, company residency uh, in last two lectures, uh, you know, uh, which were uh, learning outcome too. So start and end of accounting period, expenditure allowable in calculating trading, Capital allowance, competition for plant and machinery, property, business income, and relief for property, uh, business losses, interest under loan relationship rules, uh, charitable payments, trading loss relief, calculating corporation tax payable, repayable, penalties for late returns, and non payment of uh, 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 tax. So today uh, we will discuss scope of VAT, list of principal, zero rated, exempt, reduced rate supplies, understand how input tax claims are affected by the type of supply, uh, registration of, for VAT, pre-registration input tax claims, deregistration for VAT and advantage of voluntarily uh, deregistrations, deregistration output tax on capital assets, inventories, VAT accounting and administration, tax point, VAT invoices, valuation of supplies, uh, non-deductible uh, input tax, <coughs> uh, relief for, uh, uh, you know, uh, impairment losses on trade losses, a special scheme for uh, SME, uh, basically, here we'll uh, touch on special VAT scheme designed for small and medium-sized businesses, uh, such as cash accounting, annual accounting, and uh, you know flat rate schemes. Uh, finally, penalties uh, for non-reporting and late payment. Again, this is uh, uh, you know that income tax is the same uh, performa which we discussed in our previous lecture, if you remember. You know, uh, basically, it tells us tax rates uh, for individuals earning between uh, a 1 and 37,500. The basic rate is 20% and uh, for dividend, um, it's 7.5% for those earning between uh, 37,501 and 150,000 pounds. The rate increases is to 40% for income and 32.5% for dividend. Uh, everybody can see my screen and can hear my voice. No issues. Victoria, Harriet, yeah, not yeah. Yes, okay. yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, just let me know at if you dividend, mean. At dividend rates, uh, at the basic rate, you put 7.5, it's 8 point. Yeah, as I said in my previous lecture, that this is a uh, year, you know, this is for example, uh, basically, uh, they are updating uh, or they are, uh, you know, uh, I think so new uh, syllabus yeah. will come out. This is 19 and 20, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you remember, I, sh I told you in my, you know, uh, first lecture, first sessions. Yeah. Okay. So, will be 8%. Okay. So, if I... If I say uh, 8%, so, you know, that further calculation will be on, might be different on you know, based on 8%. So yeah. thing will be mixed up and will be hard. So basic concepts are same, okay? So hopefully other things are same. Okay. So 
anyway uh, thank you very much for highlighting uh, i knew I, I i explained in my first lecture there are a different rates like uh, dividend is 8% but this is we will mm -hmm. go to based on 19 and 20 okay yeah okay so uh, <clears throat> the rates increases to 40% for income and 32.5% for dividend for higher income beyond uh, 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 150 pounds, the additional rate applies, which is 45% uh, for income and 38.1% uh, for uh, dividends, okay? So now uh, let's talk about personal allowance. Everyone is entitled to certain amount of income that uh, they don't have to pay tax on. For the current year, it's uh, personal allowance is 12,500 pounds. Uh, uh, Additionally, there is a transferable amount of £1,250 for some individuals. Uh, resident status is also important as uh, determining tax obligations. Individuals who have been previously resident in the UK may be automatically uh, considered not resident if they have no ties to the UK. So conversely, uh, they may be considered resident based on the number of ties uh, they have to UK, the child benefit, income tax charge. If your income falls between 50,000 and uh, 60,000 pound, you will incur a tax charge, a child benefits received this uh, charge amount to 1% uh, of the child benefit for every 100 pound of uh, income over 50,000 pound. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, percentage for uh, petrol car, car benefit uh, percentage now. So uh, cars meeting the RD standards are determined based on their ECO emissions. For cars emitting 50 gram for kilometers or less, the percentage raised is 16%. Uh, of above 51 to 75 gram per kilometer, it's 19%, uh, while for emission between 76 and 94 grams per kilometer, so it is 22% cars uh, emitting 95 grams per kilometer for more have to percentage rate of uh, 23%. Uh, before I go ahead, uh, uh, you know, I have a most uh, recent tax rates and percentages. So what I'll do that I'll share in a group or I can individually message you guys, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, basically, I got this from a different awarding body, uh, but they are very useful. It's, it's a 2024, you know, everything related to VAT and some other tax uh, uh, taxes. Uh, for company when benefits, uh, the scale uh, charge is set at three thousand four hundred and thirty pound, and the van fuel benefit is uh, five hundred fifty pound. Uh, ISA or individual saving account uh, uh, have an overall investment limit of uh, twenty thousand pound, providing individuals with a tax efficient way to save or invest their money. Uh, the property income at basic rate restrictions applies uh, to 75% of finance costs related to residential properties impacting tax calculation for property owners. Uh, pension scheme limit, when it uh, uh, it comes to pension scheme limit, there's an annual allowances, a minimum allowances and an income limit, the maximum contribution that uh, qualifies for tax relief without any earning is 3600 pound uh, for approved mileage allowances for cars there are set rate 45 uh, 45p per miles uh, for up to 10000 miles and 25p 5p per mile for mileage exceeding uh, 10000 miles lastly uh, capital allowance rate uh, uh, dictate uh, rate of allowances for different assets uh, for plant and machinery, the main pool allowances at eighteen percent. For while the special rate pool is six percent. Motor car the rate vary based on CO emissions ranging from hundred percent for new cars with emission up to fifty percent of fifty gram per kilometer to six percent for car uh, with emissions over hundred and ten gram per kilometer. Uh, 
uh, who's uh, uh, Lloyd, uh, can you hear me or can you see my screen? You have one guy show. Uh, okay. Might be he has some issues, so that's why. Okay, so the annual investment allowance, uh, uh, this allowance allows businesses to deduct the full value of qualifying expenditure on assets from their taxable profit. Uh, the rate of allowances is 100%, uh, 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 meaning businesses can deduct the entire cost of eligible assets up to a limit of uh, uh, 1 million pounds. So moving on to uh, cash basis uh, accounting, uh, the method allows small businesses to calculate uh, 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 their taxable profit based on uh, money in and out of uh, their businesses rather than using traditional accounting methods. So the revenue limit is, for cash basis accounting is 150,000 pounds. Uh, next, we have uh, corporation tax, uh, which is the tax applies on the profit of companies uh, for the financial year 2019. Okay, so 2019 is talking about. So the corporation tax rate is 10%. This applies to profit up to 150,000 uh, pounds, 1.5 million, sorry. And uh, then value added taxes, consumptions tax levied on goods and services. Uh, the standard rate of VAT is uh, 20%. Uh, there are registration and deregistration limit for VAT, which are 85,000 and 83,000 uh, pound uh, respectively. Inheritance taxes, inheritance tax uh, rate, is a tax on the estate, the property, money, and possession of someone who has died. So the nil rate band is 325,000 pound, and there is a residence nil rate band on 150,000 pound. The rate of tax on the excess over the nil rate band is 20% for uh, lifetime gifts and 40% for uh, death. Capital uh, gain tax is a tax on the profit made from selling uh, certain assets. Uh, the normal rate of capital gain tax rate 10% for basic rate taxpayers and 20% for higher uh, uh, rate taxpayer for residential property rates are 18% and 28% respectively again. National insurance contributions are uh, payments made by employees and employers to fund state benefits. Class 1 contribution rate is 12%. Uh, again, this is a 12%, but I believe so this is uh, now 10%. If uh, Victoria can uh, comment on this one. Yeah, they they were increased uh, the thresholds as well, I think. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, national insurance is 10% now. Uh, uh, not quite sure. Yeah, they are reducing to 10%. Mm -hmm. They are not increasing uh, national insurance. They are reducing or already reduced, I believe. So mm -hmm. So with the profit threshold for £8,632 uh, per year for employees and a rate of 13.8% for employers on earning above uh, 650000 pound per year. Interest rates are important in financial calculations. Uh, the assumed official interest rate is 2.5%, while the Bank of England base rate is 0.50%. Oh, finally, uh, there are important in financial calculation, uh, 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 there are uh, standard penalties for tax errors. Uh, which vary based on taxpayer behavior. For example, the maximum penalty for deliberate and con concealed errors is 100%, uh, uh, while uh, the minimum penalty for uh, prompt disclosure of a careless error is 15%. Again, this is a UK tax uh, systems. Everybody knows there are several tax purposes, including funding government expenditures, uh, 
redistribution wealth, influencing economic behavior and promoting social uh, objectives. So in terms of structures, tax can be categorized into two main types, direct and indirect taxes. Direct taxes are applied directly on individuals or businesses such as income tax and corporation tax. Uh, indirect taxes, on the other hand, are imposed on goods and services such as VAT and excise duties. Uh, this is a, a, a quiz. Uh, I think so I can't open, but uh, this is just a, a quiz about VAT or same as above, you know, that uh, just uh, showing some percentage mm -hmm. based on, you know, year. So here now. Value added tax VAT registration uh, traders, right. So VAT is an indirect tax that is uh, uh, typically uh, short, uh, shouldered by the final consumers in the United Kingdom. It, it is overseen and managed by HM uh, or uh, C, uh, HM Revenue and Customs. So the collection of VAT, primarily the responsibility of businesses that are registration for VAT as they collect VAT on behalf of the uh, government. Businesses uh, uh, that are VAT registered have certain obligations and benefits. Uh, they are required to charge output uh, tax on their sales, which is essentially uh, uh, the VAT added to the uh, price of goods or services sold. Uh, however, they can also reclaim input tax on their businesses expenses. Input taxes refers to the VAT paid by businesses on their uh, purchases and expenses. The mechanism of VAT involves deducting the input tax paid from the output tax charges uh, charged. This means uh, that businesses only pay VAT on the uh, value they add to each stage of production or distribution. Uh, typically, VAT returns are submitted to uh, HMRC every uh, three months, dealing the VAT collected on sales, uh, which is output, and VAT paid on expenses, which is input. So the difference between these amounts results in either a net payment to HMRC or repayment from HMRC. Uh, um, a completing a VAT return involves providing accurate information about the VAT collected and paid by the businesses during the uh, reporting period. Uh, this process ensures compliance with VAT uh, regulations and help maintain the integrity of the uh, tax system. You know, uh, 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 just in my mind, because I am uh, because of taxes, you know that, you know that uh, uh, everyone is uh, studying for IFA, am I right? So basically, you guys are working towards IFA, Institute of Financial Accountants. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you know that you guys will get a two license. Do you know? Everyone knows that. I think one is Australia, isn't it? No, no. Then three license. Three. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you will get a, a, a Institute of Financial Accountants, uh, uh, which is a financial accountant license. Then you will get a, a Institute of Public Accountants, which is a Australian based uh, uh, awarding body because they merge with each other. And then you will get a, what I was talking about in terms of tax. You will get a tax advisor uh, license as well. Okay. Okay. So okay. when you yeah, so when you apply for uh, your uh, license or final membership, so you should tell them you have to tell them for uh, another license, which is a tax advisor qualification. Okay. Okay. 
So uh, I think so initially you can apply for associate tax advisor. So you will get a three license. IPA, which is from Australia, IFA, which is UK based, and then uh, tax advisor fine, uh, uh, qualification. So which is a proper license, associate tax advisor. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you say can you say again? So it's tax advisor qualification. Uh, the other one for Australia, how is it called? Uh, IPA oh. Institute of Public Accountants. Public okay. Accountant. Okay. Yeah. You will get a membership for. In, uh, I think so. Victoria can get a license. I think so. You all of you have experience, accounting experience. You, you all can apply for a directly license. So. Oh. So where where do we apply for this license after we after completing your qualification? You know right. that after completing your uh, all subjects, mm -hmm. so you might have some exemptions. So you some of you uh, might completing a few mm -hmm. subjects, or some of you might uh, completing all subjects. But after completing, uh, you know required subjects, you can apply, uh, uh, they will guide you, UK University as well, they will guide you uh, towards license mm -hmm. application, but you can apply uh, directly to IFA, okay? Right, okay. Every, uh, you will, every, uh, have you, any one of you pass any subject yet or got certificate? Any one of you got any pass subjects or any certificate? Like if, if you, uh, required three, four subjects. Have you passed any subject and get any certificate? Yeah, I passed the personal taxation. And did you get certificate as well? Yes. So it it shows uh, not only uh, uh, awarding, but it also shows IFA as well on the top of your certificate. Yes. Yes. So you can, they will contact you or you can apply directly to IFA for, uh, you know, financial accountant, tax accountant, and because why I'm telling you, because this is a very, very, uh, you know, good qualification tax advisor as well. So yes. if you will ask them, then you can, they will, you know, uh, 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 complete your form for both qualification, like a tax advisor as well. So I think so there are some extra charges. I don't know how much is it, but you can apply for uh, tax advisor qualification as well. So. Okay. This is a very good thing because normally people, you know, for tax qualification, uh, you go through the Chartered Institute of Tax Advisors. Obviously, that, that's a quite uh, uh, highly regarded qualification as well. But here you can get a tax advisor license. Okay. So okay. is it based you... on, on any on any assignment we've done or because I I have submitted my assignment for law for accounting recently. I haven't got anything yet. I'm waiting. Yeah, you will get you will get response soon. That's not a oh, problem. Yeah, yeah. But just to remind you that you can get uh, IFA, you don't need to apply for a IPA uh, membership. Once you will apply for a financial accountant, you will get a both certification or both membership. Okay. Mm -hmm. IPA mm -hmm. and Australian and uh, uh, basically you can use for a immigration purpose as well. I mean, you can work in Australia as well. Okay. And but uh, you, 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 uh, you don't forget to apply for a tax advisor uh, membership as well. Okay. Okay. They will, I, I don't think so they charge too much, but you will get a license, tax advisor license. Okay. Right. So they, this is a very good. Most of people don't know. They only know that it's a, a financial accountant license, you know, professional financial accountant license. But they don't know you can get a professional tax advisor license as well. Okay. Right. Yeah. And for that, we have to contact IFA directly and... Yeah, uh, after completing, uh, after completing... Uh, you can speak to UK University or, or, or I will explain you in my last session, which is next, uh, you know, uh, uh, Saturday. Saturday. So I will speak to office and once you complete, you can contact through the email office or, or IFA. So mm -hmm. they process your membership, you know, even if you get a membership, uh, I quickly tell you that membership associate financial accountants and associate tax advisor. Okay. Okay. And then associate in uh, Institute of uh, Public Accountants of Australia. So same license, you will get a 
uh, one license, you will get a li one license for a, a public accountants of Australia and financial accountant of UK, which is a professional financial accountant, plus tax advisor license, okay? Okay. So you can apply for a tax advisor license. Right. Uh, which is really, really good. You know, that very, very uh, good and respectable uh, qualification. So UK University helps you a lot through, you know, com to complete these qualifications. So this is a very good. So uh, VAT is only applicable. Uh, yeah, I've done that. Uh, yeah. So uh, there are exemptions for VAT. Exempt suppliers are not subject to VAT and businesses engaged in such supplies cannot register for VAT or reclaim input tax on their uh, expenses. Uh, registration and deregistrations. Uh, any comments on this? Anyone can uh, tell me registration and deregistration. No one? VAT no. registrations and uh, uh, re deregistrations. You have to earn like 80,000 or more to get uh, registered for VAT. Yeah, VAT is only uh, uh, registration. Uh, VAT uh, registration can be either compulsory or voluntary, depending on a certain uh, criteria. First of all, you know that businesses must, must register for VAT within 30 days if the value of tax able supplies exceeds the registration thresholds over a 12 months periods. Alternative, uh, alternatively, they must register immediately if there are uh, reasonable uh, grounds to believe that the value of taxable supplies will uh, surpass the registration threshold in the next 30 days alone. So, but even if a business turnover falls below the registration threshold, they can still choose to register voluntary for VAT. So, these decisions come with advantages such as reclaiming input VAT, but also entails administrative uh, responsibilities and potential penalties for non-compliance. So, the current registration threshold as per the uh, Financial Act 2016 is uh, 85,000 pounds. Uh, businesses primarily engaged in zero uh, zero rated uh, uh, suppliers can apply to HMRC for exemptions uh, for VAT registrations provided they meet certain uh, you know criteria outlined by the tax authority. So uh, registration when considered, uh, you know, uh, whether a business needs to register for VAT, there are a specific criteria and uh, rules. Uh, there are uh, uh, these rules, uh, you know, help determine if the business makes taxable supplies and its turnover exceed certain thresholds. Uh, firstly, we need to assess whether the business makes up any taxable uh, supplies, uh, you know, uh, taxable supplies refer to goods to services that are subject to VAT. If the business does make does make taxable supplies, uh, we can need to consider if these supplies are expected to exceed eighty five thousand pound in the next thirty days alone. This is known as the future turnover rules. If business does not make taxable supplies or if the taxable supplies are not expected to exceed 85,000 pound in the next 30 days, then VAT registration is not mandatory. Mm -hmm. uh, 
However, if the business makes taxable supplies and they are expected to exceed 85,000 in the next 30 days, the then VAT registration is required. If the future turnover rule uh, does not apply, we move on to assess whether the taxable supplies made by the uh, business in the last 12 months exceed 85,000 pounds. Uh, this is known as the uh, historic turnover rules. If the taxable supplies to date to exceed 85,000 pounds in the last 12 months, then VAT registration is uh, mandatory. If the taxable supplies uh, to uh, uh, they do not exceed 85,000 pounds in the last 12 months, then VAT registration is not mandatory, but the business can still choose to registration voluntarily. voluntarily. Uh, but if the business cannot meet the criteria for VAT registration, it cannot, uh, you know, register for uh, VAT. Uh, here. Okay. Failure to register. Uh, register. Uh, voluntary registration threshold exceed temporarily and failure to register. So basically, once a business uh, registered for VAT, there there may come a time when it decides to voluntarily uh, deregister. This could be uh, because the value of taxable supplies in the following twelve months period is are not expected to exceed 81,000 pound as per the fin Financial Act 2016, uh, 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 you know, limit. So in some cases, a business might temporarily exceed the registration threshold. In some, some uh, in such instance, traders can apply for exemptions for registration by demonstrating that the threshold has been exceed only temporarily. Failure to register for VAT can have consequences Supplies made after the uh, effective registration date are considered uh, VAT inclusive, meaning the trader must apply the uh, appropriate VAT on these sales to HMRC. Uh, the trader can then seek to recover this VAT uh, from the customers. Tax points uh, and tax invoices. Uh, in in VAT accountant, each uh, supply is treated as taking place on the tax point, which determines when VAT becomes due. <clears throat> the basic tax point for goods is typically the date on which goods are removed or made available to the customer. For services, it is the date when the service is completed. Uh, but there is also the actual tax point, which could be the date when the invoice is issued or payment is made. It is before the basic tax point. Uh, alternatively, if the invoice is issued within the 14 days after the basic tax point, uh, the invoice date can also be used as the tax point. Uh, so understanding the uh, you know tax point is uh, important for correctly accounting for VAT and issuing VAT invoices in uh, compliance with uh, 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 regulations. Uh, deposits and advance payments and uh, uh, pro forma invoice. Uh, when dealing with uh, a deposit and advances payments, uh, there may be two tax points to consider one of the deposits and another for the balance. Tax point for the deposit is often uh, the date when the payment is made, especially if, the, uh, if it occurs before the delivery of goods and services. Uh, pro forma invoice when are uh, preliminary invoices provided before the actual VAT invoice. Uh, do not impact the tax point, it is essential to uh, to uh, uh, wait for the issuing of the official VAT invoice before determining the tax point for our uh, transactions. Uh, the tax points for deposits and advance payment is important for accurately accounting for uh, VAT and uh, ensuring compliance with VAT regulations. Errors uh, correction reporting 
Charles Holtz. When uh, correcting errors in VAT returns, businesses must adhere to certain reporting thresholds. If the uh, net error in a VAT return is not uh, deliberate but exceeds the greater of uh, £10,000 or 1% of the turnover up to maximum of £50,000, uh, it will surpass the error correction reporting thresholds. Uh, in such cases, businesses have uh, uh, the option to either adjust the error on the next VAT return or or uh, uh, or either adjust the error on the next VAT return or complete uh, form VAT 652 uh, to report the error to HMRC's error correction team. Uh, but deliberate error must be disclosed uh, separately to HMRC errors correction team, regardless or whether they exceed the reporting thresholds. The error correction reporting threshold is essential for businesses to comply with uh, VAT regulations and avoid penalties for incorrect uh, reporting. Uh, uh, different penalties, uh, late submission or payment of VAT returns can result in penalties uh, imposed by HMRC businesses issues with a surcharge liability uh, notice uh, within the last uh, 12 months may face a surcharge for defaulting on payment during the period. If a VAT return is not submitted, HMRC can uh, raise an assessment based on their estimate of the owned amount. Uh, businesses failing to dispute this assessment within 30 days may be liable for uh, uh, penalties. Uh, penalties can also be imposed for failure to keep accurate record. Errors in the VAT return, whether deliberate or careless, uh, and failure to register for VAT by the required date. Uh, the penalty implications for late submissions, payment, record keeping, failures and registrations lapses is important for businesses to maintain compliance with VAT regulations and avoid financial penalties. Uh, it is also essential to keep record for a minimum of uh, uh, six years. Yeah, uh, six years. Record. Plus the current year. Sorry? Plus the current year. Yes. Uh, uh, record should be kept for uh, six years to satisfy HMRC requirements and facilitate uh, uh, accurate reporting and compliance. Past six years and plus current years. Okay. Uh, fraudulent evasion of uh, VAT uh, involves, this involves intentionally uh, deceiving HMRC to avoid uh, payment the correct amount of VAT. Uh, this can include, uh, uh, you know, actions such as falsely reclaiming input VAT or understanding output VAT on sales invoices. Uh, another form of fraudulent evasion is falsely obtaining a bad debt relief or a repayment from HMRC. Uh, changes in VAT uh, legislations. Uh, HMRC communicates uh, changes to VAT uh, regulations and uh, procedures through various channels including uh, uh, bulletins, uh, notices, and uh, uh, their websites. Uh, these changes can have significant impact on businesses affecting their, uh, their system, uh, uh, cash flow, and internal process. So businesses must ensure that they communicate changes in VAT payment amount and due dates internally to relevant department. Uh, this may involve adopting uh, computerized systems to accommodate legislative uh, changes which may require support from uh, software uh, providers. Uh, solving uh, queries, contact with clients, HMRC control visits. Uh, uh, HMRC provides journal advice and answers to queries through their website and VAT helpline. 
uh, written advice is given by HMRC if relevant public notice do not resolve issues. I think so. There is a, 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 some information uh, or some desks are for accountant as well. Uh, uh, Victoria, if I'm yeah, not... Yeah, they are. They do have advisors line. Yeah, there are advisor lines for our registered accountants as well. So I think so you can contact directly there, uh, you know, and to get some information, update yourself. Yeah. So when communicating with clients and HMRC, it is important to maintain a, a polite and professional manner. It uh, queries cannot be resolved uh, through the website or helpline. Uh, contacting uh, HMRC is in writing or via email may be necessary. Uh, Utilizing uh, resources such as CPD websites and journals can help businesses stay informed and prepared to uh, address queries and cannot, uh, uh, co sorry, control visit uh, effectively. Uh, very important ethics, uh, professional involved, uh, professionals involved in VAT compliance must adhere to fundamental principle of integrity uh, objectively, ob objectivity, confidentiality, professional competence, and professional behavior. Uh, integrity involves uh, acting honestly and uh, ethically, such as not assessing client in uh, evading tax or providing false information to HMRC. Uh, objectivity requires uh, remaining unbiased and avoiding conflicts of interest. Confidentiality entails not disclosing client information without permission. Uh, professional uh, competence mandates maintaining knowledge and skills relevant to uh, VAT compliance and uh, refraining from advising if lacking expertise. Uh, professional behavior uh, necessitates obeying laws and regulations such as refraining from uh, committing tax evasion. So basically, uh, you know, these fundamentals principle are essential for maintaining trust, credibility, and ethical standards in VAT uh, compliance practices. Right, so uh, uh, compute tax under VAT scheme for small business uh, organizations, uh, the annual accounting scheme offers businesses a, a you know, uh, simplified uh, method for managing their VAT obligations to join the scheme. A business annual taxable uh, turnover must not exceed uh, uh, 1.3 million. So uh, th three, five million exceeding, uh, ex excluding VAT, once enrolled, the business is required to submit only one VAT return annually uh, due two months after the end of the accounting year. Under this scheme, payments of VAT are required during uh, uh, the year uh, with the requirement to pay one-tenth of the uh, provisions year liability at the end of months, uh, months four through 12. So the remaining balance of VAT is paid along with the annual return uh, it is uh, here. So it is uh, important to note that businesses must leave the scheme if their taxable turnover for the previous 12 months exceeds uh, 1.6 million. Uh, excluding uh, VAT, yeah, excluding VAT. So while the scheme uh, offer offers advantages uh, such as the convenience of one annual return and uh, evenly spread payments throughout the year businesses must monitor their supplies to ensure they do not exceed the turnover limit. Additionally, payment based on the previous year's turnover may not accurately uh, reflect the current year's activities Business eligible for the annual accounting scheme may also consider using the cash accounting scheme or the flat rate scheme, depending on their specific needs and uh, circumstances. Uh, now we will discuss here a uh, cash accounting scheme. 
कैश अकाउंटिंग स्कीम प्रोवाइड्स बिजनेसेस विद द स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड मेथड फॉर अकाउंटिंग फॉर वीएटी बेस्ड ऑन कैश पेड एंड रिसीव्ड एवरीथिंग इज ओके स्क्रीन वॉइस एवरीथिंग नो इश्यूज यस एवरीथिंग इज ओके फॉर मी ओके सो VAT uh, based on cash paid and received. So to join this scheme, uh, businesses annual taxable turnover must not exceed uh, uh, one point three five million, excluding VAT and VAT returns and payment must be up to date. Under this scheme, VAT is accounted uh, for when payments are made or received. Uh, offering uh, benefits uh, such as. Uh, 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 autom automatic bad debts relief for unpaid invoices. Uh, however, businesses must have the scheme if uh, uh, their taxable turnovers for the previous 12 months exceeds of uh, 1.6 million, excluding VAT, uh, while the cash, cash accounting scheme is advantageous for businesses offering long period of credit to business uh, customers. It may be less beneficial for those receiving long period of credit uh, from uh, uh, their suppliers. A flat uh, uh, rate scheme, uh, when we talk about flat rate scheme, uh, flat rate scheme basically simplifies VAT administration uh, for businesses by allowing them to calculate VAT due by applying flat rate percentage to VAT. Uh, inclusive taxable turnover to join this scheme. A business annual taxable turnover must not exceed one point uh, one hundred and fifty thousand pound, excluding VAT. Uh, under this scheme, businesses may benefit for a simplified administration and uh, potentially paying less VAT. Additionally, a discount of one percent is given in the first year of registrations. Uh, however, businesses must leave the scheme if their total turnover exceeds uh, two, 230,000 pounds, including VAT. So despite its advantage, business participating in the flat rate scheme cannot reclaim VAT on purchases and uh, expenses. Uh, And the flat rate is uh, applied to all turnover, including uh, zero rated and uh, exempt uh, uh, supplies. Again, uh, uh, ethics, uh, fundamental principles, professional involved in VAT compliance must adhere to fundamental principle of integrity objectively and confidentially professional competence and professional behavior as uh, discussed above. So basically professional uh, uh, behavior necessitates obeying laws and regulations such as refraining from committing tax evasion. These fundamental principles are essential for maintaining trust, credibility and ethical standards in VAT compliance uh, practices. Uh, VAT treatment of business expenses, uh, business entertaining input tax on business. Uh, basically, uh, when it comes to businesses expenses, such as entertaining and vehicles, there are specific rules uh, regarding the reclaiming of input tax for VAT purposes. So business entertaining input tax on business entertaining expense cannot be reclaimed. Uh, However, input tax on entertaining staff can typically be reclaimed. Car and van, cars and vans input tax on the purchases of cars generally cannot be reclaimed, while input tax on vans can usually be reclaimed. There are exceptions such as when cars are used exclusively for business purposes within specific industries like uh, 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 taxi or, uh, you know, driving instructions businesses or when entertaining overseas uh, customers. Uh, fuel uh, scale surcharge, uh, sorry, fuel scale charge. Uh, if there is any 
private use of vehicle including fuel businesses may need to increase the amount payable to HMR uh, C and reclaim input tax on the purchases of all fuel. Additionally, output tax may be payable if there is uh, private use of fuel, uh, the VAT treatment of businesses expenses is important for businesses to correctly account for VAT and ensure uh, compliance with uh, regulations. Reclaiming uh, uh, input tax. So uh, when it comes to capital items uh, such as uh, vehicles, uh, there are specific rules regarding the reclaiming of uh, input tax and charging output tax for VAT purposes, uh, like when uh, input tax is typically uh, recoverable on the purchases of a van and output tax is uh, charged on the sale of van. Uh, most cars or any, any cars, I mean the most cars input tax generally, uh, input tax recoverable or purchases, uh, input tax generally uh, 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 cannot be recovered on the purchases of most cars and output tax is not charged on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, or sale of uh, most cars as they are uh, exempt from VAT. So the VAT uh, treatment of capital item is essential for businesses when making significant purchases or uh, sales to ensure compliance with uh, VAT regulations. Partial uh, uh, exemptions. Uh, partially exempt traders, a businesses that makes both taxable and exempt su supplies is known as a partially exempt trader. So in such cases, uh, input tax must be uh, uh, apportioned between taxable and exempt supplies. Input VAT relating wholly to taxable supplies is fully recoverable. Input VAT uh, relating wholly to exempt supplies may be recoverable subject to de minimal minimize limit. Uh, if the total input tax attribute to exempt supplies is below uh, the uh, uh, the minimum limit, all input tax is recoverable. Overseas uh, transactions, uh, when dealing with the imports and exports, businesses needs to understand the VAT treatment both outside and uh, inside the UK. So outside the uh, uh, EU exports of goods or Destinations outside the EU are usually zero rated for VAT. Uh, imports of goods from outside the EU are subject to VAT at the same rate as if the goods were purchased within the UK. Inside the EU, when supplying goods to uh, customers in other uh, EU countries, the treatment depends on the customer's uh, VAT registration status. For acquisitions, good bought into the UK from within the EU, VAT is usually uh, accounted for by the uh, uh, customer. The VAT uh, treatment of imports and exports is essential for businesses engaged in internationally trade to ensure uh, compliance with VAT regulations and avoid unnecessary tax liabilities. Again, uh, keeping record, VAT record must be kept for uh, six years. Uh, VAT registrations traders are uh, required to maintain accurate uh, record of their transactions for a minimum of six years. These records must include some um, summaries of both suppliers made and suppliers received, allowing for the calculation of VAT due and enabling HMRC uh, officers to verify the figures on VAT returns. Uh, summary of suppliers, uh, supplies uh, made. This includes detail of all supplies made by the trader categorized by standard rate, uh, reduce rate, zero rate, and exempt uh, supplies. Uh, records should be kept up to date and organized in a manner that facilitates the calculation of VAT due uh, sources of information for this summary may 
uh, include sales and sales returns, day book, cash receipts, records, and petty cash records. Cash supplies uh, uh, received. Similarly, trade traders uh, must maintain a summary of supplies received, including uh, uh, details of purchases uh, categorized by standard rate, reduce rate, zero rate, and exempt uh, supplies. Detail of trade overseas, EU and non-EU, uh, if the traders engage in international trade, both within the outside the EU, details of these transactions must be recorded separately. Non-standard uh, adjustments, uh, traders must maintain a VAT account to track VAT transactions accurately and facilitate the preparation of VAT. Uh, returns adjustments made for VAT purpose, such as adjustment for partial exemptions or bad debts, should be uh, documented. Right. So, calculate VAT liabilities for given data VAT invoices. Uh, Basically, invoices are essential documents for VAT purposes, and there are specific requirements for their uh, content. Uh, required details invoice must include details such as the name, address, and VAT number for the suppliers and customers, invoice numbers and dates, total amount of VA charged, and descriptions of goods or services supplied. Then simplified invoices, uh, simplified invoices, uh, may be issued for amount not uh, exceeding 250 pound, including VAT, and must contain essential details, uh, credit notes, uh, credit notes issued to customers, uh, decrease output VAT and decrease the amount payable to HMRC, uh, credit note obtained from suppliers, decrease input VAT and decrease the uh, 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 amount reclaimable for HMRC. Uh, pro forma uh, uh, invoice. Uh, this invoice cannot be uh, used to reclaim input VAT and must be clearly marked as, uh, you know, uh, as such. So must be clearly marked. This is not a, a VAT invoice. Uh, discounts, trade discounts and settlement discounts, uh, uh, trade discounts which are deductions made before calculating VAT can be handled using different methods. Invoice discounted amounts, VAT is calculated on the discounted amount. Invoice uh, 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 full amount, uh, VAT is calculated on the full invoice amount, invoice both amounts. Uh, means clear instructions should be provided the uh, to customers regarding the recoverability of uh, of input invoice. So settlement discounts, on the other hand, impact uh, uh, impact uh, the amount of VAT charged based on whether the discount is taken up or not. If the discount is not taken up, uh, future action may include issuing a further invoice for the discount plus VAT or issuing a credit note for the discount plus VAT if the discount is uh, taken. Yeah, uh, everything is all right. Everybody can see my screen, my voice, everything is all right. Yeah, all good. Okay. All good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just nearly uh, a few more uh, slides. So hopefully you'll be fine. So bad debt relief, bad debt relief is a mechanism that allows businesses to claim back the output VAT they have uh, previously uh, accounted for on sale invoices that uh, have gone unpaid and have subsequently been uh, written off as bad debts. Uh, eligibility criteria to qualify for bad debts relief, the debt must be more than six months overdue, but less than four years and six months old. Additionally, the debts must be formally written off in the uh, businesses accounts. Measurements, the eligibility period for bad debts relief is measured from when the payment uh, becomes due. Impact on uh, VAT returns. Uh, 
or claiming budgets relief increases the input VAT that can be reclaimed on the VAT returns, uh, specifically in uh, you know box uh, uh, four. The process of budgets relief is essential for uh, businesses to manage their uh, cash flow uh, effectively and ensure accurate VAT uh, reporting. VAT account. <clears throat> Uh, the VAT account serves as an important link between a business record and its uh, VAT return. So uh, uh, how it functions, if you see here, you know, input uh, uh, tax, uh, VAT, uh, input tax, this includes VAT on credit purchases, VAT on cash purchases, bad debt relief, error adjustments, VAT allowable for EU acquisitions and deductions from credit notes from suppliers. Uh, output tax, this includes VAT on credit sales, VAT on cash sales, fuel scale charge, error corrections, VAT due on EU acquisitions and deductions from credit note to businesses. Uh, <clears throat> the balance of the VAT account must match the figure on the VAT returns when payment is made to HMRC, it clears the VAT account, uh, 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 VAT account ready for the next VAT accounting period. Uh, the VAT account operates, ensures businesses accurately record and report VAT transactions, facilitating compliance with tax regulations. Here are uh, tax boxes. Uh, we just dis uh, we just mention here uh, a box four as well. Here, if you see the box four, so here's the uh, VAT returns and uh, VAT uh, boxes. I'll quickly go through. Uh, the VAT return is a critical, you know, documents that businesses use to report their VAT liability or reclaim uh, to HMRC. So here are some uh, boxes on the VAT returns and their uh, significance, box one to nine. Uh, one, the box represent the VAT due in the current period on sales and other output, including uh, any fuel scale charges. Box two, uh, VAT due in the current period on acquisitions from other uh, EC members, EU member states in, reported in the box. Uh, then uh, box three, uh, the total VAT due is calculated as the sum of the uh, value in box one and two. Box four, input tax on purchases and other imports, including acquisition from EC, is reported here. Uh, this box also includes any bad debts relief uh, uh, claimed. Uh, box five, net VAT to be paid to HM revenue and customs or reclaimed by the uh, businesses is uh, calculated as different difference between three and four. Uh, then box six, total value of sales and other output, excluding any VAT, including the figure from box eight, if uh, applicable, is reported here. Box uh, uh, eight, uh, total value of all supplies of goods and related costs, excluding any VAT to other EC member states, uh, reports in whole pounds box nine uh, uh, total uh, value of all acquisitions of goods and related costs ex excluding any VAT from other EC member states reported in whole uh, uh, pounds. Uh, VAT accounting and uh, submission here. So uh, VAT periods, uh, there are required to account for VAT for each VAT period. These periods are typically three months long, but may extend to 12 months under the annual accounting scheme. VAT returns completion, uh, a VAT return must be completed for each period detailing various aspects of VAT transactions. So box one to nine VAT due on uh, sales, other outputs due on EU acquisitions, total of boxes one and two, input VAT uh, on purchases, other input net VAT due. And uh, uh, then uh, number six, uh, uh, 
uh, total sales and other output excluding VAT are reported in this box. Uh, seven total of purchases, other input excluding VAT uh, box uh, eight and nine, or oh, sorry, box seven, uh, yeah, uh, purchases, other input excluding VAT eight and nine. Uh, these boxes capture the total sales to the purchase from the EU member states, uh, respectively. So, uh, submission uh, deadlines uh, completed, uh, VAT returns. Submission deadlines completed, uh, uh, VAT returns must be submitted to HMRC no later than the due date specified for the period. All figures on the VAT return should be uh, presented in pounds and pence with whole pounds used to simply city these aspects of VAT accounting is uh, important for businesses to ensure uh, compliance with tax regulations and avoid penalties for late submissions. Submitting the VAT returns, uh, VAT return understand the VAT returns and payments deadline is important for businesses to fulfill their tax obligations. Online uh, return, online uh, VAT returns must typically be uh, uh, filed online with uh, the return due date uh, failing one month and seven calendar days following the end of the return periods. Uh, payment due dates, uh, uh, payment due date varies uh, depending on the method of payment for electronic payments made alongside the online return. The payment is due on the same date as the online return uh, uh, for payment uh, 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 via direct debit. The payment uh, due date is the online return date plus an additional uh, 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 three uh, bank working days, three working days. So by adhering to these deadlines, businesses ensures compliance with HMRC regulations and avoid uh, potential penalties for late submissions or uh, payment. <clears throat> Consequences, penalties. Uh, obviously, late submission or payment of VAT returns can lead to various consequences, including penalties and, uh, you know, uh, assessments. So surcharge traders who, uh, uh, you know, de default on their VAT returns or payment may receive a surcharge liability notice or SLN, which remains in effect for 12 months uh, failure to pay within the specified period can result in additional uh, surcharge. Assessment, if a VAT return is not submitted, HMRC may issue a assessment based on their uh, estimation of the amount owed. So businesses must notify HMRC within 30 days if they believe uh, the assessment is incorrect to avoid penalties. Uh, then is uh, record keeping. Businesses are required to maintain accurate records for six months. Uh, failure to do so or committing uh, careless or deliberate errors can result in penalties. <clears throat> uh, whether these errors are uh, uh, rectified <clears throat> or subsequent returns or are uh, reported separately. <clears throat> Inaccurate uh, returns penalties may be uh, imposed for uh, submitting inaccurate VAT returns. However, uh, businesses can reduce these penalties by promptly informing, uh, you know, HMRC of any error. Failure to register businesses uh, that fail to register for VAT by the required date uh, may face penalties for non-compliance. The consequences of late uh, returns and payments underscore the importance of uh, timely uh, compliance with VAT regulations to avoid financial penalties and maintain good standard with HMRC. Uh, fraudulent evasions of VAT uh, falsely reclaim input VAT understanding output VAT. Uh, fraudulent activities related to VAT include uh, falsely reclaiming input VAT or understanding uh, output VAT as well as uh, falsely obtaining bad debts relief or repayment. 
uh, engaging in such behavior is illegal and can lead to severe penalties. Uh, tax avoidance versus tax evasion. Uh, uh, I hope you know that tax uh, avoidance is legal. Uh, uh, tax evasion is criminal uh, offense. Uh, while tax avoidance, which involves uh, using legal means to minimize tax liabilities, is permissible. Tax evasion, which involves deliberately evading taxes through illegal means, is a criminal uh, offense. Uh, finally, uh, penalties in cases of minor evasion, penalties may be imposed, however, more severe instance of evasion can result in fines and even imprisonment. Uh, highlighting the uh, seriousness of fraudulent behavior, the distinction between legal tax planning and illegal tax evasion is essential for businesses to ensure compliance and avoid severe consequences. Uh, correcting errors, uh, method one and method two, Errors, in, according to method uh, one, errors can be corrected on the next VAT returns if they uh, meet certain criteria. The error amount is no more than 10,000 pounds. If the error is between 10 to 50,000 pounds, it should not exceed 1% of the uh, turnover for the current return periods. So the error are not deliberate. In method two, uh, alternatively, error can be corrected by submitted from VAT 652 or uh, writing a letter to HMRC. Uh, this method is suitable for errors that do not meet the criteria of corrections on the next VAT return. Uh, disclosure criteria error exceeding 50,000 pounds or exceeding 10,000 pounds and more than 1% of the turnover for the uh, current return period or deliberate errors must be separately uh, disclosed to uh, HMRC. So here is a, a same uh, for, uh, you know, video for a tax return. Uh, you can uh, watch. Yeah, that's it for today. Uh, this, these are for your references and uh, you can get uh, some books and material on your website as well, or I mean, learning management system or, or on your Moodle. So thank you very much. Any question, comments, concerns, issues, anyone? I do have a question. Oh, who is uh, it? Yeah, um, you know, um, uh, on, on the first VAT uh, return, uh, a company can uh, declare um, up to six months for services prior to registration and uh, I think it's six years for goods. Yes. Right. So uh, my question is, um, how can you declare that when, I mean, when you enter the dates into the software, it's not allowed. I, I mean, although the, that you can put the data into computer, um, the VAT period is, um, it's not taking into account the expenses you had prior to a registration date. So you mean that how to uh, inform them previous years yes exactly Pre no no previous period yeah that's what i mean that how to yeah. so you can mention there you can make a note or you can mention there about previous periods you can you can you can write it down amount including pre previous period as well and you can mention dates there yeah but i can't put a previous date then the vat return allows yeah, but you can still can uh, mention in a note or you can write it to uh, HMRC. You can inform them in any way. As uh, as we discussed that in writing or email or in any other way, if you can't mention in there. Uh, so not, not, through, not through VAT return uh, yeah. I submit uh, from uh, the software. 
yeah not uh, if you can't if you see any issues if you can't submit there or you can't submit through the your vat online vat returns so mm -hmm. as they said uh, I, I don't know which page was it you can inform them through emails or uh, through in writing you can inform oh, them i see okay okay thank you so thank you very much and uh, uh, victoria harriet lloyds uh, our next session uh, will be on next uh, saturday uh, at 12 o'clock which will be uh, about assignments okay. and thank you very much thank everyone you. for joining me today thank and you. Uh, have a good day ahead and uh, see you next saturday at 12 o'clock mm -hmm. All right. Thank and you. If you have any questions, any concerns, you can drop me an email at yasir at uh, ukversity.co.uk. Okay. 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 Thank All much. right. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.